Hello and welcome to another episode of Through an Opaque Lens with me, Niall Murphy. And today, what I would like to discuss, right, this is going to be my last Kate Middleton related video. What I would like to discuss today, of course, is have the Kate related conspiracy theories gone too far and have they jumped the shark? And the reason why I say this is because, um, now being like, uh, as I've said in previous videos, a long time ago since I said it, think more like Sherlock Holmes and less like Alex Jones. If you're gonna be like a detective, like, um, you know, like my last video where I'd done a proper forensic examination of the photos, because I was convinced that, you know, a lot, there's a lot of inconsistencies and stuff like that related um, to Kate. Um, then out comes a video and, uh, it's Kate basically announcing that she's um, getting treatment for cancer. And all of a sudden, people in my feed on Facebook and other places on social media are trying to say that that's AI generated or a deep fake or a double or it's a green screen and all of the rest of that. And I've come to the conclusion that um, if I was to just trust my eyes, then I have to assume that this is actually real and that I, that I don't believe people who are getting caught in habitual conspiracy thinking. Because I've come to the conclusion that habitual conspiracy thinking is actually really bad. It's like a, it's a level of mental inflexibility. It's a little bit cult-like. And I think to myself, well, I will change my position by using my eyes. I think, you know, I'd rather just um, not worry about what other people are thinking when it comes to stuff like this. I'm not gonna worry about whether I'm alienating people. Um, I'm not worried about whether people are going to unsubscribe to me because I'm not um, supporting their confirmation bias. I don't care about any of this. Basically, I want my um, subscribers to be the most mentally flexible people that there are. I want people um, who do subscribe to my channel to be tolerant of different opinions and um, differing opinions and changing perspectives over time. I want to basically make sure that the people who follow me are the cream of the best collection of people who are as echo chamber proof as can possibly be. I, um, as I say, I think uh, there's a lot of phrases I use, um, a lot of words and phrases that I use that give specific meaning to things that are not really used in um, daily life. And uh, one of those is, that came from Terence McKenna is epistemological cartoons. And I've come to the conclusion that you know, everything from um, religions to political stances to uh, you know uh, narratives based around a certain way of thinking are all epistemological cartoons people just want to believe what they want to believe and uh, you know uh, and then of course if any evidence new evidence comes along that kind of debunks it they'll find a way of making it seem like it's all part of that so anyway one of the things that I decided to do was uh, I was online last night and one of my um, Facebook friends decided to put this picture of Kate in, um, you know, this, from this latest video of her announcing that she has cancer and saying that it was um, AI generated. Now I found this um, AI detector site, of course, I think um, she used, and I decided to put the video through the AI generator just to see what came out. And lo and behold, it told me that it was 97% likely to have been created by AI. But as I don't trust anything I hear, as I am the sort of person who um, thinks, well, you know, how do I know whether this tool is real? I don't know how kosher this tool is. It might just be a load of bollocks for as far as, far as I can tell. So I got a photo still of myself from the last video that I did, and I put it through this AI detector and I actually found that there's a very there's an 84% chance that my video was um, AI generated. So you know what that means, don't you? If I was to take the conspiracy thinking to its logical conclusion, I would have to come to the conclusion, right, that, um, or you would have to come to the conclusion, therefore, that all these countries, all these foreign locations that you've seen me be in, including here in the Philippines, as well as, um, you know, Costa Rica, Colombia, El Salvador, and Nicaragua um, that you've seen me in since um, 2021 have all actually been fake. And it's all a green screen. Not only that, but maybe I'm not real. 
maybe I am a deep fake, you know, just ask my mates, oh, what do you think in the aisle? Well, he's, he's quite deeply fake actually, right? So maybe I'm not real either, which then makes uh, me have to have an existential, existential crisis about myself. Oh God, I'm not real, I'm not here. That AI generating tool tells me that I'm 84% unlikely to be real. So therefore, I have to start doubting my own existence. And this is the reason why I um, just don't believe it. So I'm going to tell you the truth of what I think. I think that um, this is all real. I think that Kate Middleton actually did come out and um, sit there. I have, I have no reason to doubt that's her from the way she looks, from the way she sounds, her mannerisms. I've seen lots of um, pictures and images of her. She does look very thin, very gaunt around the face, but I think considering the situation, this is actually very likely. So I have no issue with this. As far as I'm concerned now, this is case closed. I can move on to talking about other things. Right, and um, you know, as well as that, I also think it's good to be kind. I think that in this certain situation, if we're going to be exemplars and we're going to be good people, then the one thing we should not do is be insensitive. Because at the end of the day, and I know a lot of people believe that all the royals and all the elites to be shape-shifting lizards or whatever, I think that's going a little bit too far myself personally. I think that like um, this is some kind of intelligence test of sorts, right? And the reason why I don't believe that these people are shape-shifting lizards is because if we have to make these people into entities that are far superior to what we are, then we have to admit defeat and we have to think, well, there's nothing we can do about them. All we can do is upscale these villains, if you like, um, who run the world, up to infinity. And therefore, well, what can we do? There's nothing we can do. We're just merely, you know, humans. And they're like, they're like, what? Shapeshifting lizards, or the Nephilim, or the Anunnaki, or all of these things. And as a result, we have to um, put them so far up ahead of us, and so far above us, and upscale them infinitely, that it does just create a completely self-defeating narrative. It also absolves us, as human beings, from associating ourselves with them. And I think it's really important that we do uh, associate ourselves with them when it comes to the fact that if we were given all that power and all that prestige, if we were at the top, our shadow side is still biting away at us there. Wouldn't that not corrupt us too? Would we not, if we were in the top of the tier of the dominance hierarchies of the world, what's to say that we wouldn't become that way ourselves? What's to say we wouldn't be corrupted? What to make us say, you know, that we're so great, because we might be, if we were there. The old phrase about power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely. What's to say that we would not be corrupted by that power if we were there? Sorry, I have to look up and make sure there's no coconuts dangling over my head, like a tropical sword of Damocles. Anyway, I'm all right here. So, so this is what I say. And so, um, you know, when it comes to, as I've said many times before, the mainstream does lie, it lies by omission, it lies by spin doctoring, it lies by being economical with the truth, it lies by reframing everything, and it lies by um, propaganda as well, um, so we know that. But it's also regulated and has checks and balances that you won't find in the alternative media. The alternative media is the complete wild west. And as a result, both sides and both sources are dubious anyway, right? And so what makes you think that just because the mainstream media is misleading you, that the alternative media won't mislead you? Also, if the alternative media itself is um, so unregulated and so much like the Wild West, what's to stop people who are involved in propaganda, spying, nudging and all of that lot, uh, coming in and taking over the alternative media sphere and space? They have a lot of money, they have a lot of resources, they know how to do it. And as we can't trust that half of um, the people we're interacting with or commenting us are real anyway, we don't know there might be bots, there might be sock puppet accounts, it might be chat GPT writing a lot of um, generic phrases that are there to bolster uh, the mainstream narrative. We just don't know, do we? We don't know at all. So, I've come to the conclusion that what happened was a lot of people are asking, where is she? Um, and then, of course, on one side, we've got a lot of the kind of people who are, you know, the, the easily triggered, sensitive people who've been crying on her behalf, go, um, going on about how she's been bullied and, mm, stop bullying her. The thing is, right, that, you know, we wouldn't wish this on anyone. 
I've had, um, you know, I knew someone actually who uh, died of cancer aged not much older than Kate is now, be honest, right? So that's the thing, um, and it's been quite a prevalent thing. Lost my mum to cancer. I'm not sure that I lost my dad to cancer. I know he was in the early stages, but I think the symptoms that he um, died of were not actually the cancer itself. He had a lot of other health problems as well, you know, obesity-related health problems. So I've come to the conclusion, despite what I saw in the death certificate, getting the latest information, it wasn't actually cancer that killed him, but it could have been if he lived long enough, you see. But nevertheless, you know, you don't, uh, you don't be insensitive when it comes to stuff like that. You've got to be a bit sensitive because you've got to be a decent human being, I think, at the end of the day. And look, if this is the case, then I do think that um, people should not be rude about it, not be insensitive about it. And it does bother me a little bit that a lot of people who are, you know, are considered to be my friends online are still getting carried away with all of this. They think everything is a hoax. Now look, was the flat earth thing, that was a test, as far as I can see. The, the flat earth thing for me was a test. It was basically turn off all the narratives that you read about and, um, you know, just don't just trust everything willy-nilly. You've got to verify it for yourself. So what did I do? Well, I've told you about the flat earth. I went and looked at the moon. I've been to many different latitudes. I've seen Orion with the three dots like that and dots going down there like, well, here in the Philippines, they rotated 40 degrees. I look at the moon, the angle of the moon rotated 40 degrees compared to England, right? This is the thing. And where I am now, I'm currently about 41 degrees closer to the equator than Devon. If I were to get a set square or a protractor or some geometrical instrument and a spirit level, and I was to get the moon lined up at the top of the middle of the sky, I could prove with the geometrical instruments the latitude by just rotating it and then I'll be able to say, right, this is what latitude we're on, and I could do this with scientific instruments. And that convinces me that the flat earthers were wrong. You know, um, so that's the thing. So I'm using my eyes and um, I'm trying to work out things for myself. I don't think, right, that this new release of Kate is fake. I think this is all the truth. I think she was under pressure to actually make an announcement. Now, there will be people on one side, you know, the absolute royal bum lickers who think that, that William and Kate can do nothing wrong. And they're, they're on Team Wales and not, and their, their enemies they're feuding with is um, Team Sussex, you know, uh, Harry and Meghan. Now, I really don't care about any of this stuff. I'm not, I'm not part of some feud drama soap opera bollocks. I mean, fuck that. <laughs> These people, I don't know them. They're just there. They're just there to fill our heads up with, you know, so we can live vicariously through people who, you know, we think are more important than us. Well, I don't. We're human beings at the end of the day. They're just higher up the dominance hierarchies, but what's the point of wasting your time on this, right? That's the thing. So, regardless of anything, um, how can you bully the next future queen consort, the, the wife of the future king of England, when you're just a lowly peasant? You can't, can you, really? It doesn't, doesn't count. It's such a stupid thing to say. But if people are actually really insensitive, then, you know, these same people who are just insensitive trolls will be insensitive trolls with everyone. It'd be very easy to spot these people because they're not very well socialised and they don't have much compassion. Well, the thing about it is you meet these people in real life then you know you're dealing with wrong ones. So, there you go. So, the thing about it is she did the right thing. She came out and she said what she said. And... The only issue I have is, well, why the hell didn't they do that sooner? And, um, you know, I would also suggest to, um, you know, the royals, the firm, well, why don't you just fire your PR team at this point? I mean, they made an absolute pig's ear of it. They've made you look tone deaf. And there's plenty of times in the past where the royals have been made to look tone deaf by their PR teams, by their speech writers, by their advisors and handlers. This is not the first time that's happened. So, you know, I would say that if you want to bring yourself properly into the 21st century, the one thing you must do, if you don't want Britain to be a republic, is to bring in a decent PR team who are in touch with, and you know, um, with the zeitgeist, and are in touch with public opinion, who are not too remote, you know, because you hear a lot of times of people who go, tourists who go on the, on the tour of Buckingham Palace, just how rude and how badly treated they are, by the staff, 
you know, and how it, a lot of the time it's not value for money that the um, that the the royal entourage, the staff who uh, work for the firm, so to speak, are not the nicest people, and they they hate those peasants, right? Maybe not necessarily the royals themselves, but the people who are working in the service of the royals. Um, they have a reputation for being like that, which is a bit, a bit sad. So you know. Um, it's very important that if they want to stay where they are, they have to make sure that um, they can read the public, they can read the public mood, and uh, that's that, really. As for the conspiranoid side of things, it really does bother me, because, look, I've been through these photos, I've been through everything, I've done a forensic examination, I've found discrepancies, I've thought to myself, well, yeah, there's something up here. But then when Kate comes out, sits on that park bench with that blurry background. Well, I look at that and I think, well, I've done videos in the past where it's been high pressure and there's been no wind and the trees behind me have not moved. I think when that one where I've done the dimension jump to England, you should look at that video. It's about a year ago from now where I've done the split screen and I've done the crap special effects where I jumped from Costa Rica to England. One of the things you will notice is that the picture in England, there's no wind. There's a little bit of sunshine um, and there's no wind. It's uh, late winter, early spring, deciduous trees in the background. But one of the things that you will notice is that the background does not move. Now, it could be green screen, couldn't it? You, know, you could say that about me. Well, I took a photo of my last video, put it through this AI uh, detector tool and it told me I was 84% unreal anyway. So, so there you go. So, this background is blurry. It's known as bokeh blur. It's a common thing to happen with a lot of cameras. Now, they're not going to be using a, you know, what I've got, the, the um, Osmo Pocket 3 camera. They're going to be using big, like, you know, big uh, Canon-style cameras with real proper lenses on them. And the bokeh blur, the background, is going to be normal. If it was filmed on a day with high pressure and no wind, well, yeah, there would be things that are... Um, there will be things in the background that don't appear to be moving. That's normal, I don't, I don't question that at all. Um, she's in the foreground in very sharp focus and the park bench that she's sitting on in very sharp focus. Now I can see a few insects flying around. Those little tiny flies are pretty much consistent with what you would find in around about the time of spring equinox. Also the trees and the blossoms and the daffodils look like they're at the right time as well. I have no reason to doubt any of this, you see. And I have no reason to doubt anything that she said. Now, of course, it does sound scripted because they're going to do that, aren't they? Yeah? Um, they're not like us in that sense. If they're going to use the media to present themselves, they're going to um, sound scripted. So that is consistent. Also, the fact is that they are going to use some post-production tools on the video to make it look presentable and professional, you see. And there's no, there's no issue with that because that's what they do in the mainstream, right? So that would make the um, AI detector kick off, uh, you know, because that picture that made me seem 84% unreal. I actually put it through um, iMovie's um, film grain effect and I did actually tweak the colours a little bit. I do it to give it more of an analog feel. I also do it to my audio as well to make my voice sound more like it was recorded on tape and less like digitally. That's all right, is it not? You know, I do this just basically because it's, you know, I'm old fashioned and I want to have a bit of an old fashioned feel to it. That's all. But anyway, um, I would say that we have to be really careful about conspiracy thinking. Conspiracy thinking, if you take it too much, too far to the end degree extreme, is actually really bad for us. You know, it's all right in moderation, a bit like alcohol in that way. But there comes a point where it jumps the shark. And so I would um, say to people, yes, it's good to be sceptical. It's good not to believe everything, not take everything on face value. But the thing is, that means that you also don't take everything on face value that the truther movement um, pedals as well as the mainstream. You've got to be able to kind of get somewhere in the middle, get some sort of level of um, unbias, if it's even possible for us human beings to do, escape your echo chamber. You know, like I say, I mean, who cares if you lose face amongst your peers? The truth, or the, the searching of the truth, your understanding of the truth, should not be bound by other people's rules. And um, my um, analysis of all of this is that this now brings closure to everything. And um, I'm no longer um, on the Kate Spiracy bandwagon because I'm convinced that this is real. 
And I think that, the, um, that they panicked a little bit. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to read the public. They were a bit nervous of telling everyone. They were pussyfooting around, beating around the bush, going around the houses rather than being direct. That's pretty normal in English society, believe me. You know, I'm not really like that myself. I think because of my Irish background, I'm a little bit more direct than the English are, which kind of makes me very um, prone to committing social faux pas over there. But it's a bit fucking too socially constipated an environment for me to live in anyway, right? That's the thing. So that's kind of how it goes, because I just say what I see. But I've got to be honest, in this particular case, I think the people who are still buying into the whole conspiracy-related stuff now really need to just stand back, reevaluate their position and ask, am I jumping the shark? You know? And move on. As far as I'm concerned now, this is, this is closed. I'm happy, I'm convinced uh, that this is all right. Now, when I say I'm happy, I don't want anyone to take me out of context. You know, I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, when it, when, it comes to, um, when it comes to her revelation that she has cancer and that she's getting treatment for it, well, you know, obviously, wish her well. Why be, why be mean? Just because she's um, at the top of the tree in the dominance hierarchy of, um, of human beings, why be mean? I don't think that, you know, I don't see a mean-spirited, sinister person in Kate Middleton. I don't. I do in Klaus Schwab, I do in Tony Blair, but I don't in Kate. So, you know, that's the thing. What reason would I have to be mean about her, you know? I'm sure if I met her in real life, well, I don't know, you just don't know, but I think, um, I think it would be a pleasant bit of small talk and I don't have any reason to doubt that. But in the meantime, you know, um, the internet has trapped us into a second matrix. So we've got to just remember that, haven't we? You know, I mean, we're not ready for how the digital world is tinkering with our brains. For those who won't be nudged, there's a second level of defence and we will be reverse psychologically nudged. Probably some that we appear mental, you know, but that's a level, of course, um, that they're willing to go to so they can play us off against the normies and say, look at how mental all those people who are not normies are. Aren't you glad you're normies? Take your medication, right? Um, and then they can... Um, they, it's very easy then for the polarisation they can create. Look at all those really crazy... Um, far right, probably. You know, lunatics that are out there. They believe everything that they hear on the internet. The normies, it's never brought to the attention that, you know, believing everything they see on BBC or CNN is um, you know, just as bad, right? Of course. But that's how it goes. So um, I think all we've got to do, risk being in a minority of one if that's what you have to do, um, and uh, try and aim to be a true exemplar. And one of the one of the key things for me is um, you know trying to be an exemplar is have common decency and common sense and you know just enough sensitivity and kindness as well when you need it and a bit of ruthlessness when you need that too but it's got to be balanced doesn't it right well I hope um, that was food for thought and there may be a few people who are a bit too far down the rabbit hole who might be angry with me now for. Um, no longer believing the Kate Spiracy narrative. Well, you know, I'd like to say that I was brought up thinking that everyone was entitled to their own opinion, but as we go into this weird future that we're in at the moment, less and less people think like that now, don't they? So there you go. You see, I should have your opinion, not my own. How dare I have my own? How important do I think I am that, that I should have my own opinion on anything? When yours is obviously better than mine, despite you being in an echo chamber. <laughs> right, so that's how that's the problem we have now. Hey, right. I shall leave it at that. See you later, alligator. See you soon. Baboon. If you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And while you're at it, check out all our social media links. Please help this channel grow. Your help will be appreciated.